Now, MPs have been told that more than 100,000 ash trees have already been felled in Britain. In an effort to stop ash dieback disease spreading across the country, imports of seeds and saplings have now been banned. But that's something the government was urged to do and failed to years ago when the fungus first emerged in continental Europe. Our science editor, Tom Clark, followed the Environment Secretary to Staffordshire to find out more. Did it blow here on the wind? As it spread from diseased saplings, could it have lurked for years? Ultimately, it may not matter. Deadly Kalara ash dieback is here. And today, the government assured us it is done and is doing all it can to stop its spread. We have destroyed 100,000 trees. Now, as we approach the planting season, I ensured as soon as I came in in September that our consultation on a possible import ban and, very importantly, movement restrictions within the UK would be as brief as we could possibly make it. That consultation ended on Friday, 60 responses and the majority recommending we go ahead with the import ban today and the movement restrictions. This ash tree in the Midlands isn't dying, just preparing to drop its leaves for winter. The Forestry Commission is in a battle against the seasons to spot diseased trees. Where is it? How widely has it spread? The, the um, information we've got from our routine surveys that we've been doing over the years is that there's not a high level of disease being shown in ash. But this is a really worrying development. It's something that's potentially a game changer. So we really need to know just how widespread this is. By a car park in Leicester, diseased saplings have simply been uprooted and burnt. But how to contain the disease in the wild or whether it's even feasible, can't be decided until the number of cases is known. When it comes to the seemingly impossible battle against ash dieback, the foresters do have one new tool in their armoury, and that's us, the general public, and our smartphones. Because today, the University of East Anglia launched the Ashtag app, which allows you first to identify an ash tree and then check it for symptoms of the disease and make sure you don't confuse them with normal autumn changes like this. Then if you think you found a suspect tree, you can upload a photograph of its symptoms and its exact GPS location. Forestry Commission scientists can then come and investigate. The Forestry Commission has its work cut out, yet a serious question remains over its long-term future. It's suffered a 25% budget cut and the government is yet to decide whether it will continue to exist in its current form. Can you assure us that they have a future? Yes, the Forestry Commission will be handling this issue. And as we go into next year, they will be in charge of this. Emphatically, yes. They are the key, they are the key agency working under DEFRA. So the, the review into the Forestry Commission's future, that won't decide that... Well, you, you've asked about what's going to happen early next year. There is a review into DEFRA agencies, which is going ahead, the triennial review. And we'll be looking at how we can deliver these services. But for the, the, the time period you're looking at, the key agency is the Forestry Commission. So for the time being, the Forestry Commission remains in charge. But if ash dieback takes hold in the not too distant future, it's not certain who may have to wield the chainsaw and reshape our landscape for many years to come. Tom Clark, Channel 4 News in Staffordshire.